Today I paid a visit to the village at Greaseba here in Edmonton, Alberta with my wife Carrie and her son Sawyer. It is a community built on the grounds of where CFB Edmonton Greaseba Barracks was located. This brought back memories of my service in the Canadian Armed Forces Militia from 1978 to 1982. I enlisted in the Canadian Armed Forces Militia in May 1978 in the South Alberta Light Horse or SALH and went through basic training at Dundurn, a detachment of CFB Moose Jaw south of Saskatoon that summer. There are very few photos of me in the militia as at the time we didn't have digital cameras. The old cameras used film that had to be developed before you saw what you got. As such, we were careful to limit the number of photos we took. My recruit company at Dundurn was sent in August 1978 to Edmonton in support of the 11th Commonwealth Games. And here the first photo of me in the militia came from my ID badge for the games. Here I am. A fresh-faced 17-year-old just out of basic training. I am wearing the Canadian Armored Corps cap badge as the SALH in Edmonton had not received the proper South Alberta Light Horse cap badge yet. Next up are some photos I took at a gun camp the Edmonton SALH attended at CFB Suffield with the Medicine Hat Alberta SALH. The late 1970s into the early 1980s was a very lean time for the Canadian Armed Forces as the government of Pierre Trudeau refused to adequately fund them in favour of his more social agenda spending. The SALH was an armoured reconnaissance regiment but had no armoured vehicles, so we had to rely on the quarter ton jeep such as the one shown here. At this camp, we were training, among other things, to use the M72 Law Rockets and the 84mm Carl Gustav Heat Missile System. Wouldn't you know it? I took photos of the other guys, but didn't have anyone take my photo at this gun camp. In October 1979, the SALH, along with Lord Strathcona's horse, joined a commemorative horse ride from Calgary to Edmonton in memory of the relief of Fort Edmonton by the Steel Scouts in 1885 during the Second Northwest Rebellion led by Louis Riel. During this ride, my photo was taken for the second time during my service with the militia by a photographer for the Edmonton Sun and appeared in the September 30th, 1979 issue of the paper. Here I am with the horse I was supplied for this ride, whose name was Speck. In the photo, I am wearing the SALH cap badge that now resides framed on the wall of my home office alongside the medal an Edmonton Construction Company had made for participants on this ride. During the winter of 1978-79, I took a non-trade driver's course with the militia and really enjoyed driving the deuce and a half trucks the militia had at that time. I therefore remustered and joined the 15 Edmonton Service Battalion, which is the unit I most identify with now. Unfortunately, my photo was never taken during my time with that unit. When I left the militia in 1982, I held the rank of corporal. I was lucky. During the time I served, Canada was at peace. My time in the military was totally positive, and it is a period of my life I wouldn't give up for all the gold in the world. For the first time in 39 years, I returned to the former site of Grease Bob Barracks. Nothing I remember is left of the old base except the base gym and one maintenance building, both of which were barricaded off 
soon to meet the wrecking ball as well. In their place is a beautiful, beautiful housing development with lots and lots of park space. The developers didn't forget this neighborhood's military heritage and had lots of plaques and other tributes to the Canadian Armed Forces. The roads in the neighborhood are named after battles or important military figures, such as this road named after Lieutenant General Sir Arthur Curry, the commander of the Canadian Army in France in World War I. In one of the neighborhood traffic circles, is an equestrian statue of Major General William Griesbach, for whom the neighborhood and former Canadian Forces base was named, and who in addition to being a decorated soldier was the Mayor of Edmonton, a member of the Canadian House of Commons and Senate of Canada for Alberta. In the center of the neighborhood was an artificial hill which had a map of Griesbach barracks as it appeared in 1962 at the top. I pointed out to Sawyer on the map where the transport compound was located and where I spent the vast majority of my time here almost 40 years ago. Later on we drove past the former location of the transport compound but all that is there is torn up ground waiting for development. After descending the hill we resumed our tour by visiting the area dedicated to the Princess Patricia Canadian Light Infantry, or PPCLI, located just below General Griesbaugh's statue. In the center is a time capsule with the PPCLI cap badge affixed atop it, surrounded by small pillars with bronze plaques listing the battle honours of the regiment. I took a moment by the plaque for the World War I Battle of Passchendaele to remember my great uncle, Private George Watson of the 27th Battalion, City of Winnipeg, who was killed at Passchendaele on the 6th of November, 1917. Next, we visited the memorial for the Canadian Airborne Regiment. During my time at Griesbaugh Barracks in the late 1970s, the Airborne Regiment had its training center located here. Next, we visited the area put aside for HMCS Nonsuch, which is the Navy Reserve Unit based in Edmonton. Here is a concrete platform in the shape of a ship's bow with the number 703 which is the number of HMCS Edmonton, a Kingston-class coastal defense vessel in the Canadian Navy. Next up, we visit Roundel Lake, the area put aside to remember the Canadian Air Force. The lake was named for the round markings on British and Canadian warplanes. Here is a sculpture of soaring arrows coming out of a runway to give vision to the Canadian Air Force soaring into the heavens. Here is also a memorial to the poem in Flanders Fields, written by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae in 1915. We started our tour by visiting the statue of General Griesbach, and we will end it by visiting another traffic circle with the statue of his wife, Janet. This old man was glad to visit the area where he spent a happy part of his youth, even though very little remains of what he remembers. What has replaced it is beautiful, and it gladdens his heart to see it. Till next time, keep safe and well.